They said, how you know? I was there a couple days when the devil stole some years of my life. Just a couple days was over getting pulled over. And they made me do two days, and I'm going to tell you what, it was the awfulest two days of my life. I, I don't know how many phone calls I made, but I wasn't living for the Lord at the time. And I'd like to believe, but i tell you what I did do. I got down on my knees, and I said, Lord, if you'll get me out of this mess, I'll go back to preaching your gospel. Hallelujah. And I'll go back to serving you. And he got me out of the mess. And you see where I'm at and what I'm doing tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And yeah, I had some more things that I went through before I got ready. But Jesus will get you ready. If you're one of his, I've heard Brother Justice say a lot, you know. He'll, he'll whip you. He will spank you. He, he will do what he's got to do. If you're one of his children, until you get things right and you return to him as your child, like the prodigal son. I was a prodigal daughter. But I tell you what, Jesus was merciful. Or I wouldn't have been here tonight. Some of those times when I was driving 80 and 90 mile an hour and I couldn't think. As fast as a car would run. Jesus took care of me. How many times has Jesus took care of you? That's what I had people messaging me about after the video that I made. The wages of sin is death. I couldn't believe how many folks, people who are supposed to be Christians, couldn't even get what, what I was trying to tell the people. It was a parable. The wages of sin is... I'm going to tell you something. Jesus will spare us. But we're going to have to work for him. When Paul and Silas was singing over there, the next thing you know, and they was in that jailhouse, them, them stocks fell off of them. An angel come and they walked them out of there. It's several times they got in jail and God would get them out. What about those times? What about that tribulation? What about the tribulation over there where... Uh, the angel had to come and, and they was in that big storm and the ship fell all apart and they got to land by little boards and everything. And Paul said, went to him, he said, you know the angel of the Lord stood by me tonight. Hallelujah. He said there wouldn't be no loss of lives. People want and say that it's okay, you know, the Lord wants us to be able to watch I Love Lucy. What Jesus told you that? I said, what Jesus told you? That a little bit of entertainment. What about prayer? What about running with a footman? What about seeking the face of God? What about hearing his voice? When is the last time he said, hey, don't come in the living room? When is the last time he said, go to Walmart? And there was a hundred dollars when you had a need laying in the very lane that you pulled your car in. When is the last time that you literally heard God and know? I'll tell you what I felt today. I walked by faith today. I thought, Lord, and then I would think of this message. Okay, Connie. If you can't get up and get in front of them people and, and speak my words, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when things get harder? What are you going to do when all you can do is go talk to me? Let me tell you something. He's the best one to talk to. When we talk to him, he'll be there. You might trust in a brother or sister. And next thing you know, they'll decide to go out and be a drunk. And they won't be there no more. And you'll get hurt and you'll cry and you'll bawl. That's not where our strength is. Our strength is in the Lamb of God. Our strength is in Jesus. Hallelujah. What are you going to do when the horses come? What are you going to do? Because I'm going to tell you something. So much is already being fulfilled. People think, you know, so much has got to happen. There's probably still some things that's going to happen, but Jesus can do what he wants to, like I said in the very first blog TV service. He said, for the elect's sake, I will shorten the days. Hallelujah. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Or will he find a bunch of people putting a scripture on Facebook? 
And there's nothing wrong with scriptures. I put them on there too. But do we hear from Jesus? Or do we just say this one sounds good today? You know, if we went on there and we done the same status every day and not a living soul ever liked it, and, and we said, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he's near, it wouldn't matter if Jesus told us to do it. That's what's important. Not folks liking what we do. Be careful. I felt to tell you. Connie, be careful. Be careful, Connie. Don't care if people like you because they didn't like Jesus. If we're doing this for people to like us, we're doing it for the wrong reason. If we're doing this, thinking that we're not going to be persecuted, you're wrong. Because if you're following Jesus, you know, when Jesus began to walk to the cross, they all begin to go back just a little bit farther. They begin to stay back. They got scared. Uh-oh. You know, this is serious. They, they didn't want to be part, and they begin to go backwards. They begin to stay back farther and farther away because his time had come. And when they come to Peter, they said, you was one of them. I recognize you. I recognize you. And Peter he said, it wasn't me. You know, I feel something right now. That's what I thought today. God, children of God that's sitting here hearing my voice tonight, search your hearts. Are you ready? Are you ready? When they come and they say, we're shutting your lights off, you'll either take this in your hand or in your forehead. And you know, there's a million different ideas about the mark of the beast. But I'm gonna tell you something. There's coming an hour. There's coming an hour and it's moving in right now. It's moving in on us right now. This, this thing that they're doing in the land. I heard a sister today, she said something like she said, she guess she'd be marked after she said her status and I smiled thank you Jesus you know they're marking the people you know you want to be marked get on here like we're doing you want to be marked go on YouTube and make a video hallelujah because you, you, you think they're not watching they're not listening to the things we're saying but I'm going to tell you something children of God it is coming down it is coming down to the children of God they'll have to depend on the Lord for, for everything that they got everything that they got their food their water can you can you? Can you hear the voice of Jesus? Hallelujah. Can he let a dove or a bird go over and drop your meat for the day? Can he, can he do something? Are you hearing the voice of God right now? Are you preparing and being ready for the days that lie ahead of us? You run with the footman. How are you going to contend with horses? I'm going to tell you something. For those people that can't give up worldly pleasures right now, and they can't give up a little old, old, a little bitty old thing like TV. I'm sorry, but you won't contend with horses. And I guess that was just about as straight as anything I've said, but it's a truth. If you can't give up your remote control, somebody said, oh, I could give it up, but Jesus don't care if I got it. What Jesus told you that? What Jesus told you that? I believe that he's looking for a people that'll deny their self, take up the cross, and follow him daily. I preach this on my videos, and I had sinners. You know the strange thing? Brittany knows it's the truth. This week, one sinner after another. And, and I've got back to him, telling me, I want something. Help. Pray for me. I want something. I want something. Didn't they do it? Yep. Hallelujah. It ain't them. They'll tell you they know they're sinning. But it's these people that, that claim to be the children of God, claim to be, you know, God's people. Say, well, don't get on my sins. You know, we're not all alike. Well, excuse me, but I'm going to tell you something. In the, in the book of Acts, when the Holy Ghost fell on them there, it said... When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they was all in one mind and in one accord. And if you want to search and go home and read the whole book of Acts tonight, note how many times it talks about the people being in one mind and one accord. And yes, they was all alike. There wasn't a different idea on every street corner. If there was a different idea, it was a false doctrine. Woo, glory. 
If it was a different idea, it was a false doctrine, a false teacher. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to sing a song. I feel the Lord. You can't. We said, you going to preach all night? Nope. I think I'm about done. Hallelujah. Felt Jesus. I felt Jesus. You think you can contend with the horses? The tribulation. What some of the people in foreign countries are going through right now. So if you don't deny Jesus, we're going to take your life. But you can't lay down your remote control. But you ain't going to deny Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. We're separate people. Separate people. I know what Jesus meant when he said to be hated by all men and your, and your family. I only had two kids, two girls, two daughters, all I got. And these here are my grandkids. But I'm going to tell you something. I know what it is. It's not having. So I don't want nothing else to do with you. You're crazy, Mom. I don't like you, Mom. Glory. I ain't getting nothing for Mother's Day. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't, you know, we can respect our moms every day. How many of you know it's just like any other day? We can respect our mom. So I won't be crying. I don't, I don't do them days either. You know, if somebody brought me something, I wouldn't throw it out the door. But you don't have to worry, they're not going to. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and I won't be crying on Mother's Day. And I won't be patting myself on the shoulder and saying, Oh, that didn't bring you nothing. Jesus is my father. Jesus is my husband. Jesus. Who is your mother and your brother? He that does the will of the Father. Hallelujah. You know, I saw one of the kids walk through the door today and tears come up in my eyes. I thought, Lord, help us. Well, if the sun should be turned into darkness, and the stars from their orbits be heard. i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sing this song, and I'm not, you know, doing what they do in the church world. I, I got somebody else, you know, they deleted me this week too, and, and they say that, they're, you know, that they're in the truth of the gospel, but they said they didn't go to no blog TV services because they had become just like the church, and yes, they did say that. They sent me an email, and they said, don't send me no more uh, invites to your services. I will not be there. And and the blog TV services are all just like, no, they're not. But you know, that's okay. I told Brittany, I said, please remove their name. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I am saying this, if you've heard my voice and you're hearing it right now and you don't know Jesus, call on him. There's no time like the present to pray. And when we get off of blog TV, if you still don't know Jesus and you ain't prayed, go find a place to pray. I'm just here to tell you about Jesus. It surprised you if you saw what we got going on here for Blog TV. I'm going to sing this song. But you know, we sure ain't got nothing fancy going on. I got a little wooden table the kids made me. And I got a step ladder for a stool sort of put my foot up to play my guitar. The kid said you need a strap. I don't know nothing about that. Hallelujah. I got Jesus. I ain't worried about it. Just give me the guitar. Let me sing a song for Jesus. Let me put my laptop on this little wooden stool. And let's work for Jesus. It ain't about all that. Hallelujah. It's about loving Jesus. It's not about how fancy I can get everything going. 
I tell you one thing, if there's anything fancy about it, somebody else done it because I don't know nothing about it. Hallelujah.